What's up guys, Omar Esau here, and in this video today, I'm going to talk about knowing when to quit. It sounds counterintuitive, but it's entirely true. Employing auto-regulation. In other words, listening to your body and your nervous system, how you feel to judge how hard you should train. Periodization I'll also talk about, but essentially I'm going to illustrate with one of my failures, an important life lesson, knowing when to quit, when to listen to your body. First of all, i got to shout out the guy in the back. That's Phil, actually a subscriber that came to the gym for a day. Dude is strong as hell. He has like a three times body weight deadlift. I'm always impressed and humbled by you guys when I meet you because you guys are strong as fuck. So uh, some people are commenting, yo, Omar, for somebody saying nobody cares how much you lift, you post a lot of successes and you're lifting a lot of weight. That's in order to validate what I say. You know, as a strength coach, as somebody giving advice, nobody wants to listen to you if you don't actually lift. At the same time, I'm posting right now a failure to illustrate another point, something that I should have remembered with myself. And that's why it's a lesson. Auto-regulation is essentially listening to your body. If you feel great, go ahead, have a great workout. If you don't, don't push it. Well, I didn't listen to that. And here's what I mean. This 345-pound bench press failure you're about to see occurred exactly the week after my 340-pound bench press success. It was not part of my program. I periodized my program using something similar to undulating periodization. Uh, and what happened? It didn't call for the uh, for that for me to do 345. But I was feeling, you know, decent. I just hit 340. A 325 pause bench. My deadlift was going up, which would later lead to my 555 pound a deadlift that was quite easy. So I thought, yeah, fuck it, man. I'm on holidays, which I was. I got Jeremy, my boy, spotting me. What can possibly go wrong? Just go for the 345. Yet before doing this and even warming up. I didn't feel primed with my nervous system. I felt all right on the day if I had to rate the energy as maybe a 7 out of 10. Certainly not a day you should attempt a one rep max. But once again, with heavy lifting, sometimes, you know, ego can certainly get in the way. I'll readily admit that. Where it becomes addicting in a certain sense. You want to constantly push yourself. But you have to know when to quit. Otherwise, such as what you're seeing right here, failure will happen. That's when you're not planning properly or also when you're not listening to your body. Because I do believe in some instances, this was the week prior right here, me doing 340 pounds. I do believe in some instances, deviating from your program can be smart. If you're having a fantastic workout, if the weight feels exceptionally light, and yet you know the training session might call for a specific max, yet you feel like you could push it a little bit more and get a better result, there are certain instances where that would make sense. Jeremy himself actually trains in a lot of ways very instinctually. There is a, a strong guideline he follows, but also there is a good amount of leeway. And that's smart use of auto-regulation. I mean, training alongside Jeremy has reinforced that as something I've always known, but it's good to highlight it. He doesn't believe in failing. Uh, failing at rep attempts, a max effort. That means that if you commit to something, you should do it. You should ingrain it properly in your brain, that pattern of success. Here's another example, an example of knowing when to quit when Alistair did it properly, my friend. Uh, so that was a lesson that I learned uh, or, or relearned, let's say, near the end of last year, 2013. Here's Alistair right here. This is the week after a 700 pound deadlift. He actually, the plan was to come in and maybe deadlift 710, 720, see how it felt. This right here is 635. Look how slow uh, 635 actually was compared to his 700 pound deadlift. So clearly what happened, he walked in, he's like, you know what, I want to do 715. As soon as he pulled 635, Jeremy said, that looks slow, I would not go for a max today. And Alistair, being the smart motherfucker that he is, he listened to Jeremy and he decided, you know, not to do it. So Alistair was smart. He knew when to quit, when to auto-regulate the training session. Even if it calls for it on a, a day with periodization, if you don't feel you can hit it, I would not attempt it. So what he decided to do instead, after the 635, he loaded up some chains and did 635 plus 80 pounds of chains. And that's a smart idea. Guys, that's knowing when to quit. And that's all I wanted to share with you in this video. We all like to lift heavy weight. I'm all about success, but not at the expense of not making gains. Know when to go after attempt and when to dial it back a notch. You will see far more results. And I will say, just as a as an you know a, a brief aside, when I did 555, I was supposed to do it the day before. But once again, just testing some metrics, I didn't feel 100% optimal. I rested an extra day, and on that day 555, it felt like butter. Uh, it felt I had 565, 570 in me. 
So that idea of knowing when to quit certainly applies. Just something I thought I would share with you guys because if I'm posting my successes, I should also post when I fail. That's it. I'm out. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, make sure to show your support and like the video. And I'll be seeing all you guys in that next video. Know when to quit. Peace. Hi, Bob.